Hey guys, Brian again with Thunder Laser USA. Uh, this is going to be part two of the test. Um, I've actually already burned the two. If we go over here and look, uh, you can see that two of them are missing. Um, I did this originally, and you know, like I said, I was testing this system, and I didn't have my microphone down, so it was muted. So the entire video that I shot I didn't have any audio with it. So let's just go back over here. Um, what I had done originally is pulled up the client's uh, original format of the vector file that he's using. And I selected one of them and used the Lightburn macro in CorelDRAW uh, to send it over to Lightburn. And this is uh, what I set up. And I used 200 speed, 70 power, and a line interval of 0 0.05. And after I realized that uh, my audio wasn't on, of course, I uh, stopped. So I'm going to pick up there. And I've got the white one, the white stone, uh, with that graphic uh, at those settings uh, in the USB microscope. And <clears throat> there's probably not a lot of contrast uh, on this one. Uh, and this has not been cleaned up. Uh, I did run high high pressure air as I was doing this to ablate all of that, you know, and, and get rid of all the uh, or, or help uh, blow all that out of there so there's not as much uh, leftovers and, and stuff. So let's take a look at the uh, black one. And I can already tell that it's going to be a little bit different. It left, let's see. Oh, wow. That did something really crazy. It's really rough. This stuff is porous anyway. And, uh, wow, there's a, there's a really significant difference on that. And I'll show you with another camera that doesn't have such a close, uh, close up view. But let me put this other one back in here again. And there's the white one. And you can see how it left the outer surface uh, pretty much untouched. There's a little bit of, looks like there, there may be a little bit of spalling there on the edges. Uh, but you can definitely tell what the graphic is. And even looking at them with the naked eye, the one in this particular stone uh, is uh, not nearly as legible, not nearly as is good this is going to take some serious dialing in uh, so this is our first real hurdle um, is this particular substrate uh, this dark black uh, or the darker black of the three samples so uh, i'm gonna probably focus uh try that other one so let, let's just do that while i'm here uh, let's go back to the monitor and um let me just delete this. I'm going to drag this over here. Let me update the overlay, make sure I'm in the same place. Get back to my extents. Update. Uh, let me move that home. And we'll update again. There we go. And I'm just going to try this on one of these pieces now and see how that's going to go. So we'll just swip, swap over to that. And I'm just going to start and send that one that direction. Okay, this one fared quite a bit better, it looks like. So let's go have a look at it under the USB scope. Actually, it looks like there's some pretty good definition there. There is. It reacted similarly to the uh, white stuff that was uh, said to be softer material. This doesn't have a lot of contrast, but this is going to be filled. Uh, this is going to be masked uh, whenever it's applied and processed, and then uh, there'll be an infill. So we're just looking for depth uh, and, and you know, uh, some good clarity and definition around the edges. 
Um, I don't know, I was talking earlier about trying to use fill plus line where it would vector around these, but it's small enough that I'm not sure that there would be a benefit there. There's not as much spalling on the surface layers of this. Um, it is a little bit rough on the inside uh, where, where it was engraved, so we'll have to have a, another look at that. So now it's just going to be up to dialing it in. And I'm not sure that I want to put everyone through that pain uh, trying to do it on these videos. So I think what I'm going to do is focus on that uh, darkest one first, uh, this one, uh, the hardest one to do. And then I will work my way backwards toward the easiest one to do. And then hopefully by that time I'll have my controller in for Odin. And then we'll do the same test on an RF tube, and I can play with frequency and some other things. And we can see which one is going to provide the best output. More to come. Thanks.